it's gonna be awkward. <laughs> I don't get it. You, you do the math. Ho, 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 word! Boom. What up? What's up, gang? Save the date. It's episode eight. Ha <laughs> Said it before you did. You before did. you steal my line. Did dude. you think I was going to steal your line? Yeah, I had a feeling because you'd usually do. Fuck but. you, dude. Z, Z <laughs> thought of that earlier and he said it. He didn't want said to. said it out loud. I knew that was a mistake. Oh. Uh -huh. Sometimes I seal lines and sometimes I don't. <laughs> Throws me off every time. Um, dude, rolling along, we got perhaps the most anticipated guest yet, dude. Yeah, and I, w I wanted to say our most favorite person, but we can't say that because everyone's feelings are going to get hurt. But <laughs> he's, he's up there for like top three for sure. Yeah, top three like just of people. all time people. Well, this I is, without no further ado, <laughs> Mr. Roman Salazar. Well, thanks, man. I'm glad I top three. I've been number three many times, so we'll do that. That oh, works. Oh, <laughs> trying, to, trying to be third best always. <laughs> damn, dude. Oh, <laughs> I mean, on. we know a lot of people. <laughs> There's uh, Z's like in my number. He's up in my top four. I'm in top four of my favorite. So mm -hmm. you're ahead of him. Well, I mean, if life was MySpace, we'd be doing okay, right? Yeah, we're, yeah, right, top exactly. five. we're doing okay, man. It's we need not to bring bad. MySpace back. <laughs> Dude, well, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. I know we've been trying to do this for a little bit, and I finally found some time in my crazy, hectic schedule, and I'm glad to be here, man. It's pretty awesome. Dude, it's pretty yeah. yeah. Yeah, your yeah. schedule has been crazy. So just tell us a little bit like what you do. You're the general manager at Fight Ready, right? I am, now. man. I wear a lot of hats at Fight Ready, absolutely. But yes, I'm the general manager of Fight Ready. Obviously, still an active fighter, right? A full time dad on top of that, and believe it or not, even a husband. Sorry, ladies, I'm out right there already, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> where where did it all where did all that start? Um, well, I mean, the husband part, high school. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. But, <laughs> but uh, everything else man mma i mean it's just been a journey for me i mean i've always loved to compete started as a wrestler really miss competing looked at mma thought people that fought were nuts because how could you fight somebody you don't know or dislike and fell in love with the sport man showed up at a gym in tucson boxing inc and just instantly became addicted with the idea of bettering myself and possibly trying to, you know, be one of the best fighters in the world and just set a goal. Said, I want to make it to the UFC someday. All my friends from my small town, Mammoth, Sam Manuel, Norco all laughed at me, told me I can't happen. I was like, you watch, dude. I'm going to make it one day. You're going to turn on your TV. I'll be on that screen. And here we are. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> hey, you definitely did it. Yeah, because you, you have such a such a, a range of fights. You, you fought in everywhere. You fought in UFC, Bellator, uh you you did uh did you do some fights in South America for uh is Combate considered here locally or is that considered just yeah. Southwest? Well, I mean, definitely they're uh, a Hispanic show for sure. I mean, they're definitely looking to build. I mean, their motto is "Fight like a Mexican," right? So, I mean, mm -hmm. they're definitely looking to build that South American fan base for sure. Just not even South America, but anywhere south of the border. Not Trump's company, that's for sure. They don't want that. They want <laughs> they, they want all them non-Trump supporters to watch their show. That's for sure. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that that real gritty dude. That that Leonard Garcia style. Ooh, that's it, man. Yeah, that's it. Diego I mean, Sanchez. I will say, man. Even though it's made me a dumbass a couple times, I I. I do always enjoy that for sure. I show up ready to scrap and there's times I could take the easy way out and I'm always looking to sling them out for well, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing because you're always, uh, that's always how your fights are going. Like you're in their face every time, putting on the pressure and you just, you don't stop. You just keep going. Well, I mean, we've already even talked about on the show how like, ready for a fight you are at all times. Yeah, man. And then we saw it, I mean, we saw it firsthand but like what yeah we, i mean we see it firsthand all the time with like the short notice fights you know like you're not shy to shy away from a, an opportunity no not at all man that's what i got in this for right i mean when you're a martial artist 
you're a martial artist at heart, whether you're training or not, you always feel like you're ready to take on any challenge because the challenge really isn't about your opponents that challenge in yourself. I mean, you just want to make sure you could go out there and what can you really handle? You know, what kind of adversity can you handle? Where can you be at? Like whenever you go to sleep at night, you know, it's just you and your demons in your head and how are you going to beat those things? You know, for sure. That's a, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, hearing you say that makes a lot of sense, but I feel like we see a lot of guys kind of afraid to do that and take that risk. Yeah, 100%, man. I mean, you'll see dudes that are going to pad their record. They're going to look for the easiest fights out there. I've never been that way, man. I mean, my whole career, whenever I got signed to the UFC is because I made a habit of beating people I shouldn't. Whenever I continue fighting after, I mean, I'm the same. I mean, I could have looked for the easy way to make it back to one of these shows, but it's just not in my nature to do that, man. I don't want easy fights. I want to be in these wars I get to tell my grandkids about. And sometimes people are like, dude, that's the dumbest approach to fighting ever. And I go, dude, but I'm just like a fighter at heart. I mean, I literally, I mean, it's cliche. Some people say, you know, they're put on this planet for things. But to me, I never feel more free than whenever I'm in the cage, you know. So that's like where I get a, get it all out, fight. And then I'm just happy and peaceful, dude, no matter the outcome. Obviously, when you lose, you're upset. But I allow myself to be upset only for a little bit. And then I'm like, dude, just back at it. I do what... A lot of people in this world wish they could do, and I've touched cages that 1% of the millions of people that fight have been in, you know, so it's pretty cool. Right. It's really cool. I think, like, how you are outside of the cage is such a testament. I was just going to say that. I was going to say, like, your personality. Yeah, well. like, how, how, you, how you act, like, really shows. And then, and then, like, going to your fights in person and seeing the crowd response and the crowd reaction, like... When when you, when you see a guy who's as nice and as cool and as funny as you are, and then like, uh, uh, you think like either this guy's really a badass or he's just not made for fighting. Sure. But then like you go you go to a fight, and then before the fight even starts, you just feel the buzz in the in the arena, like you know you can whoop ass too. Absolutely, man. It's funny. I would say, obviously, in the MMA community, people don't know the way I really am, right? Yeah. Like, I, I show up, and I'm kind of cerebral, kind of quiet. Once it's fight time, I got my game face on the whole week, right. man. But they don't realize I'm a dumbass at heart, man. It's just jokes <laughs> after jokes, man. And, like, don't even make fun of me, because all I do is make fun of myself. It's all I ever right. do, man. It's you know? true, dude. It, it really is. Like, how was Ireland? Oh, it was great. Dude. I got submitted on national TV. Everyone <laughs> thinks I got paid to take a dive. <laughs> it's, like, the worst, right? Dude, just, weird, like, that was the first <laughs> thing you said to us when we were like yeah. trying to get this thing finally scheduled because you got time you're like why you want to talk about my most embarrassing moment of my life <laughs> yeah. like uh, i mean if you want yeah. it's up to you we're probably the place to do it though oh man you want to talk about awkward right to me it's just like it's funny man all the emotions uh 11 hour flight from ireland's long and you're like god man like you're like reading your instagram and dude it's so funny man like i opened up my phone and all these like DMs are like death threats. Like, oh, you pussy. How'd you take a dive? How much do these guys pay? I was like, dude, I, I wish I got paid to take a dive, dude. I just got caught like a dumbass. You know, I had a terrible weight cut. Obviously, I mean, we always want to say we're ready, but er I mean, everything was stacked you up against me, man. You DMs, Roman? Dude, I, I did. I had to, man. I was just like, oh, it's man. funny. And they're, they're, you know, they're the funniest DMs. I seen them and I'm like, they're like, like pictures of like their favorite fighters. I'm like, yeah, this guy's a man behind his keyboard with a picture of Eddie Alvarez calling me a piece of shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, how dare you? I was like, damn, dude, this guy's really offended right now. I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> like, I was like, well. You're right, bro. I took a dive. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, so like, mad, dude. It's just so God. funny. But and then just to read the comments, right? I mean, it's funny, man. Like, yeah, I mean, you see everything. I don't care because I ain't dude. I I know who I am. I'm, I'm I'm a fighter at heart. Like I said, man. Like I've been one of those dudes. I'm not kidding. I mean, I like once I got cut by the UFC. I've been in fights, and I'm the king of close, terrible split decision losses or wins, man. Like I'm just mm -hmm. always close. If I'm not knocking people out, dude, it's a split decision all the time. And people, I know where I'm at. Like people use me as that gatekeeper right now. Like I, I have to finish people. I know that. And if I don't, like dice roll. Here we go, man. No matter how dominant my fights are, and then I get to see people that I've lost narrow split decisions to go be successful in the UFC and stuff. Because I get mm -hmm. it, dude. I have a name. I know where I'm at. Again, that's why Gallagher took this fight, right? There's people yeah. lining up to fight him, but I'm a UFC veteran. So, yeah, bring him here, make him cut 26 pounds, and let me have Adam, right? To me, I, I live for challenges like that, though. Like, it's going to be a cool story. Like I said, man, all we have is memories. 
as long as I can remember it, you know, I guess someday maybe I'll get hit so much I don't remember none of this shit anyway. But but now we right. got YouTube, dude. We got Instagram. That's it, man. We got yeah. iPhone. Like you're fine, dude. Well, going right. back to the uh, to the decisions though, like a lot of the guys that we all love to watch fight, they have that same kind of record. Like Nate Diaz, split decision losses, Mas Vidal, Mas Vidal, Mas Vidal yeah. forever until he just started. Like we're to talking knock guys about, out. we're talking about one of the most celebrated types of fighters in in the game. You know that that you fit perfectly into, sure. and and you know like the 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 backbone of the sport is is fighters like you. Yeah. And so I think for, for anybody to have anything to say about a fighter like you is pretty fucking cowardly, obviously, you know, and it's, it's obviously just, they, yeah, they, they're just the, the guys with Eddie Alvarez, <laughs> but, but yeah, well, the other thing yeah. is too, is they're mad at, they're mad at, uh, they're mad at Gallagher because sure. they're always mad at whoever, whoever's getting hype and it's not. Absolutely, man. You know. And let's be real, man. I mean, a lot of people like, the casual fan had no idea you know they're like god oh, dude this guy is a lamb for slaughter they don't know but people that know i'm a mayor like oh this guy could fuck up gallagher right. he can like i mean everyone i talk to i do they brought they don't know what the fuck they did bringing you here right and i knew that i felt it in my heart dude i want this little motherfucker don't want to strike with me i know I'll, I'll put him out dude he just does not have the power to do so i just knew it man like i mean i felt it when i walked in there i mean i was like dude I have no legs. I feel like shit from this cut, but it doesn't matter. I know I can knock this motherfucker out. I knew it. And again, you know, I get caught um, going to autopilot because fuck, oh, I'm a wrestler now, right? You get hit <laughs> in my brain. Like, I'm like, oh, I redirect a double. And then honestly, man, I just like black out, have no fucking clue what's going on. And then just snap. I was like, oh shit, I'm in a bad spot right now. Like, right. that's what happens, man. Anybody's been flashed. I mean, fighters understand it, man. Like, Trust me, man. I know how to get out of a guillotine. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like I, I've been out of many guillotines. Like people just do not tap me out. It doesn't happen. I roll black belts all the time. Submission defense is something I'm very proud of. I, I'll get caught here and there, but not often, man. I mean, it's one of those things, and it's just, just to look at it. And I get it, man. People are like shit, dude. He didn't do anything to defend, but they don't understand. I ate a flying knee right in my chin, dude. Mm -hmm. You know, You're like. Well, and you kind of did. Like all of a sudden, you can't, you can't smother or, or block. Yeah, well, I, I saw yeah. that too when the ref covered that. Yeah, and moved your hand. And that. to be honest, man, that that second is whenever I came to. He touched me. I think he was checking to see if I was awake or something. Yeah. He just told me not to touch his hand. And I was like, oh shit, I'm in a bad spot. He started trying to move, but by that point, he had a high elbow and it was gone. It was a rep. Yeah. I mean, that's how these things happen, dude. Trust me. I mean, I've been in fights where dudes think they're in a fight and I hit them once and I hear them snore. They get up and they're arguing with refs. Like, what happened? I was still in this fight. Mm -hmm. So you just can't comprehend what's happening, right? right. I mean, in our mind, we're all fighters. We all train. We'll fight to the death. We're stupid. You know, it's up to our corners to save us sometimes. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. Like I said, it's a learning experience, man. Luckily, whenever I took the fight, I said, one condition, man, you guys got to give me another fight in the camp. I don't care who it is on that roster you're giving me. I, I go, dude, anyone top to bottom, I go, I'm going to give any of them a fight. Just give me six weeks to get ready for these dudes, and I promise you I'm going to give you guys a show. So, I mean, they were kind enough to do so. So oh, now, yeah, we know yeah. my next fight is going to be in a Bellator cage for sure. It's oh, just yeah. like, when's it going to be, you know? Right. So now, what are we going to do with this? So it's going to be dope. What was this one? Like six days, seven days? Um, By the time I got out there, I had seven days <laughs> to get ready. Yeah, seven days, 11. And you did your cut all out there? It was, yeah. I mean, dude, by the time I showed up there, man, like I left here weighing 159 pounds. I'm like, this is doable. It's 19 pounds. I'm going to 11-hour flight. I get there. You retain water. I weigh 164, and I get there. I'm like holy shit dude i was like, all right cool i guess we got 24 pounds to cut you know and it's one of these things dude. you don't hear the stories of what's going on like no, i mean right. right away you got you know obviously super hello biased <laughs> exactly. uh, uh, you know announcers from the uk he didn't even make way i'm like yeah, dude, dude. Go, you guys don't get it like yeah. i was sitting in a bathtub cutting weight stop sweat i'm like literally dude i'm like to the point where i'm four pounds off and they bring the Bellator officials and they look at me and they're like, I'm like, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna make this weight. By this time, I lost hearing in both of my ears. By this <sighs> time, I was losing sight in one of my eyes. I didn't care, dude. I mean, we're stupid. Like I said, it's up to our corners to stop us from doing dumb things. And the Bellator officials like, dude, just don't cut another pound because if this keeps going, you're gonna knock in a kidney failure right now, and we're not gonna have a main event. So, I mean, they told me to stop cutting. You know, I was like, yeah. all right, well, make sure that's okay with James. I go, I'll make this fucking weight. 
and then I uh, know we were able to reach out to James. He said, it's okay, man. He wants to make sure he fights in front of his Dublin crowd. Obviously, he played it up and fucking, oh, right, you already yeah. quit. You already did this. I'm like, dude, you know goddamn well yeah. that I was asked to stop cutting. I'm so stupid. I, I, I would have cut until I couldn't cut anymore. And you're right. I probably would have ended up in a hospital like a dumbass in Ireland and not have fought. But... I, it's just it's just what we do dude it's our nature it, i mean we'll do whatever it takes. You're it's damned crazy. if you're damned if you're doing you're damned if you don't on yeah. those conditions and, and you almost have to like just say fuck it well, so that you get that next that sure. next shot it's always the guys like not in it the reporters who have never trained 100 well, they're and just and like oh this pussy miss way i'm like dude including my amateur career i've been in a cage across another man trying to hurt me more than 40 times and i've never missed weight like, I just haven't. Like, I'm a professional, dude. I'm a professional yeah. first. You always hear it. Your job is to make weight, then you go fight. I've always known that. So, I mean, dude, I've made, I mean, man, whenever I made my UFC debut against Mitch Cagnon, that was on an even shorter notice, and yeah. I cut from 162 to 135, you know? So, I've done it. Oh, and uh, it gets just, yeah, one of those things, like, I've been there, you know? I mean, like, I'm a, I'm a veteran. Like I said, I'm seasoned, dude. I'm just one of those dudes who've seen it all. Nothing shocks me anymore dude even walking in a hostile territory and people booing me and being crazy in ireland and the whole damn marina wants to kill me thirty thousand people i'm like to me i don't care i get it dude they just follow their their fighters they love their idols whether it's mcgregor whether it's gallagher whoever's fighting from there dude and you're not from there you're public enemy number one yeah, dude. so exactly. it just didn't matter i actually just sat there as he was walking out i was like yeah it's probably pretty cool being him right now man it's just like the bon jovi of fucking ireland right now <laughs> and i was like dude, i want to know the song they're singing i want to join in and sing with these motherfuckers dude it's pretty cool you know <laughs> so yeah i gotta fight i gotta punch this guy right now but it's it's pretty it was it was a pretty cool moment man it really was dude all in all it seemed like such a a, a good opportunity to be able to just you know get get yourself situated uh for the rest of I guess your future. That's it, man. Yeah, Absolutely. Really and I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Like, I mean, I go out there, I, I know I'm going to take care of business. I'm going to, whoever they give me next, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fight like I always do. The only difference is we have new weapons in our arsenal now with our new coaching staff. So we're actually, we're putting some game plans together. Now we're oh, doing yeah. some things and I'm reinvigorating myself, man. I really am. I'm at a point now where I've done it all. Like, I mean, obviously I haven't been, a world champion like Henry, I've not, uh, but you know, I've held multiple local championships. I've been champ chaps for companies. I've done everything, but to me, I'm still getting better. It's one of those things. I turned 31 this year. If I was like honestly getting worse, I don't. I mean, dude, I have a good gig. I, I'm okay. I don't. I, I make a good living. I don't have to fight, but I love fighting, and I know I'm still getting better. So, yeah. like, I just know. The world hasn't seen what everyone at the gym has seen yet, and they're yeah. going in one day, and they're going to be like, where the fuck did this guy come from? Because he's been there this whole time, man. He really has. So it's just one of those things, man. It's like getting all the right pieces, you know, making sure mentally I'm ready, making sure physically I'm always ready. And it's just, just more tools on the tool belt, man. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, MMA is super cool because it's really the sport of – like late bloomers in the nfl obviously you can't be a late bloomer really but in mma we've seen it so many times to where like you had robbie lawler sure. you had uh later the better andre Seems arlovsky like. to where you have a little bit more season you take a little bit of time off of maybe like or change your sparring change how you train and absolutely man that's what i love about the sport man it really is and it's just one of those things like if you're evolving i mean and you're only as good as your last fight, man. Like, honestly, I go out there, I go put on the performance of my life, my next fight. No one even fucking remembers what happened with Gallagher. No. It doesn't right. matter, you know? And it's the same thing. It's like anything else. You could be riding this wave where you're on top and everything's going great. And, I mean, look at Whitaker, dude. Like, yeah. literally, I mean, he's just fought Saturday. I mean, everybody, I mean, obviously, Adesanya's a new, I mean, it's fucking awesome, by the way. But <laughs> just walk out, everything he's doing. And I'm just like, <laughs> even me, man, I mean, I'm like, dude, well, we'll see. This is like, to me, obviously, Kelvin's tough. But this is a real tough test in Whitaker. This guy's a monster. Dude. He's fighting you well. I was just like, I was real intrigued to see how the matchup was going to be. And you just see, dude, like, I mean, it's crazy. Like now at this point, I mean, I'm reading things like, oh, Whitaker sucks. He took too much time. I like, do this motherfucker was a monster, unstoppable for yeah. years. He has one performance. You can't even call it a bad performance. He looked great in the first round. I mean, he's just fighting an elite fighter who's mm -hmm. been active and fighting. And just like that, it's like his career is shit now. And it's not, you know, yeah. but that's the cruel reality of this sport. You're only as good as your last fight. Had it gone the other way, dude, I 
I guarantee you the the hype train derails. Oh, yeah, well, the captions about his his uh, walkout. walkout dude would <laughs> oh, have yeah. not. He had been... to win that fight, by oh, the yeah. way, with that walkout. <laughs> yeah, I knew I knew Whitaker was fucked once I saw him do that backflip. Oh, I was dude. like, dude, it's uh, he can't lose. Yeah, now, it's but... a wrap now. He's got to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, yeah, dude. It was it was really a a fun fight. Like we were both saying how we were kind of hoping for it to be a five round yeah. war just like see how how long they can stay up but uh we we're like it's not gonna last very much no longer. not at all after like that knockdown at the bell i was like yeah this is ending this next yeah. round he's not yep. gonna you could see him sitting on his stool i'm like yep you don't know where he is and he did come back he came too but at that point he switched from trying to land to trying to throw everything as hard as he can and whenever mm-hmm. a fighter does that they know they're like punches are numbered they know they're in trouble so yep. that's one of those things and you can see it as a fan too like the more the more that you watch it like uh, you can just see like when people exert all their energy and it just oh, yeah 100 percent that uh it just changes there's a, a dynamic shift a feeling that changes. yeah you can see it man 100 percent. yeah the sad thing is uh about the sport though is like what exactly what you just said someone loses a fight their career is shit yep. but if a guy is a champion and then tests hot for steroids, they're not, it's not, their career's not shit anymore. You, yeah. you see what I'm saying? It's yeah, just 100%. kind of a weird thing. Like it's kind that, of forgiven, you're saying? Yeah, it's like a little John more forgiven, Jones but it's is, such a cutthroat sport to where it's almost like common sense is just out the door. Yeah, dude, that's true. Like if it, like John Jones, John Jones has a worse, has it worse for him if he loses a fight than if he tests positive for steroids okay. yeah 100 okay. yeah okay. And that's the thing right he's a cash cow so with somebody like that he's at a point now kind of like where henry is where people want to tune in like so we wanted two things like right fucking hates him and wants him to lose kind of like the mayweather effect mm-hmm. and honestly yeah, henry's the same so <laughs> <laughs> you know my teammate and everything with the king of cringe is the same right now at this point like <laughs> like people just want to watch henry lose you know but he's a draw now he's made it to where people want to watch him fight now like before that is like uh the 125 division sucks there's no personality anywhere mighty mouse one of the best martial artists ever just had no personality so that whole division sunk you know and henry did something to keep it alive and kept it going and i mean dude you see uh, dude him in little captain's glasses were holding back <laughs> with Chino after i was like dude you gotta be kidding me yeah. <laughs> i was like these guys are gonna hold this dude back with one arm get out of here right now but Hey, it was comical to me. I was laughing anyway, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, it just is what it is. John Jones, arguably best fighter ever, fucked up a bunch of times. So to me, that's tainted. Yeah, exactly. to me, it's tainted. Yeah, but I'm a fighter. Be. Yeah, a casual fan. Fuck no, right. he's the best well, he even could Connor do. Too. Yeah, like, absolutely. Connor, yeah, yeah even Connor. You're like fuck, man. Oh, like, dude. And can't again, man. And I, I mean, I was a big Connor fan. I thought he did a great for our sport. He got us all paid more. He did good. And again, he's fucking awesome. Even in Ireland, whenever I sat there and talked to him for a while, and uh, I was just like, oh, yeah, he's cool, you know. But then you see all the asshole crazy things he does. You're like, yeah, he's not that cool, you know. Yeah. And to the point to where, like, everywhere we were in Dublin, nobody respects a dude anymore, dude. It's like, mm-hmm. fuck Conor McGregor, you know. I was like, oh, wow, I thought for sure these guys are going to be like, dude, they don't worship the ground he walks on like they did in the past, you know. But mm. it just shows you your actions, dude. They go a long way. They really do. But – and Dana's UFC, that's all forgiven if you're one of the cash cows, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you can fuck up as much as you want, where if you're one of the under-the-radar guys, you mess up your cut right away. So it's like one of those things. It just sucks, man. I wish it was an even playing field. It's a, it's one of those sports, dude, that's like it's it's struggling to find its way without that uh, union sort sure. of effect or like – or just the sense that like some kind of fighters association. It's a business. Yeah. It's still a business. They're they're each individual businesses. So sure. as much as they're a league, it's still it's an individually owned business or not individually owned business. But there's there are businesses that are owned by people, not leagues with commissioners. So True. that makes it such a a, a more gray thing. Yep. And it like I don't know what the, what the even fix would be. You know, like what what league do you think is doing it the best out of any of them? I mean, honestly, probably one FC. I mean, yeah. these guys are doing things right. I mean, their weigh in strategies, the way they respect the fighter, as opposed to what are they doing anything. for weigh in? I mean, uh, they do a forty eight hour weigh in, so okay. they do a mock weigh in. You weigh in before, so they're making sure you don't hop into that cage with the dehydrated brain still, right? And again, 
I mean, they're like dropping the 10% rule all the way in just like California did. To me, I think worst part by far of our sport, dude, it really is just like ridiculous to me that we cut so much weight and then put so much weight on. And why do we even do this? You know, and the, in reality, it's not the damage we're taking is taking years off our body. It's the weight cuts that takes years off of our life. You know, it really is. It's just yeah. crazy. Again, going back to this last one, I mean, it's not, this one was impossible where the ones before, I was like, dude, why do I do this? It's just crazy. This makes fighting not fun, you know? But then you get your hand raised and all of a sudden it's all worth it again. But it's like, it's just one of those things, man. I really do. I wish that it was all the way across the board. You can't show up 10% heavier. I think people would fight what they more naturally weigh in and it take care of a lot of the fighters. And you see a lot better fights, man. I mean, whenever you fight with a dehydrated brain, it's crazy, man. It really is like. You notice it, it. right away. You get hit with the jab. You're like, oh, I just flashed a little bit mm-hmm. like that. That would never hurt me in sparring because, I mean, all camp, you're hydrated. You feel great until you go and cut down. And again, that's like, honestly, like with this knee that James caught, dude, I've been kicked in my head before practicing. All right, cool. Here we go. But I honestly felt it like, dude, I somehow got to evade whatever he's throwing me. Like if this guy lands a good anything on me, chances are I'm going down because mm-hmm. I hadn't recovered. Right? right. I could feel it. I mean. If I'm being honest with myself, and I'm always honest with myself, I could feel it on my way. I was like, this little motherfucker, he has no power. But if he hits me with something, he could probably put me down right mm-hmm. now. Like, I mean, you just know it. And then there's other fights where you have good cuts. You're like, you could hit me with the truck. I'm not going down today. Like, you just know it. Right. And that's, to be honest, most of my fights at 145, I just, like, I don't care what I get hit with, dude. Bring a bat. Like, I'm going to be all right. Is that and, what you're going forward with is 145? Yeah, yeah. I, we talked about it with the coaching staff and stuff. I still got to convince Santino of this. I was like, oh, damn, I'm getting taller, dude. I'm 31 now. So <laughs> I'm just going to – this is it, dude. I'm just going to have to <laughs> lift a lot of weights. Like my wife keeps hoping I get taller because she can't wear heels. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's one of those things. I was almost that perfect human, but they made me 5'7". Fuck. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, man. Not everything it's cracked up to be. <laughs> Yeah, he gets hit with the weather a lot sooner. It's- weather sooner. <laughs> Expect fa- at, like people are going to ask for favors all the time. Like, can you reach this for me? Can you grab this? And yeah. it's always shit I still can't reach. Damn it! So I have to like figure <laughs> out a way to gotta, step on something, and yeah. then now I got to like grab extra stuff. It's a yeah. mess. That's a nightmare. But so you're you're fighting one forty five. Uh, you didn't start out though that light. You were a thick little mommy, <laughs> weren't you? I was a big puppy, dude. Well, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because we we all three have a little something in common. Yeah, dude. Man, we've all absolutely. been thick little mommies. The yeah, three I used of to us. used to look like El Chapo for sure, man. I remember, <laughs> like, I'm not kidding, dude. I mean, I was well over two hundred and ten pounds at one point, and uh, really came back, man. Like. And it's funny because I was already an amateur fighter, but whenever uh, my daughter was born, I was like, oh, yeah, this doesn't pay me. I can't be a fighter anymore. You know, this is this is crazy. The dream's dead. And at this time, my wife was going to school and stuff. Whenever she finished, I mean, dude, she's had my back for everything. She's like, go back and do what you love. Like, let's let's go be a fighter. Let's get to the UFC like you said you would. And uh, at that point, you know, I was, I was already ready to give it all up. I really was. I was just like, yeah. Like, it was cool. It was a cool dream. I, I'm a dad now, you know, and just 100% being a dad. And, and yeah, she pushed me, man. She really did. And she still does all this time. I mean, there's been times I've had losses. Why do I even do this for? What's going on? She's like, dude, don't quit. It's not in your nature. You don't do that. Things get tough. You get tougher. It is what it is. And that's it. Just wake up and I go fucking train hard the next day. And I just forget about it, man. It really is because I, I know I have, like, that ride or die with me at all times. It's just no matter what happens, no matter who stops loving me in the fight world, no matter what, I have the support of all my friends at the gym, my family, my wife. So that's really all that matters. And all the cool experiences that come with it are like, you can't trade those for nothing, you know? For sure. That's pretty cool. All right, we got to do a quick camera break. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Yeah, dude, having a, having a ride or die, I think, uh, is something that we've observed, you know. Picking right up, yeah. <clears throat> what? I'm just surprised, you know, usually it takes a minute to like. Well, regain. I just remembered because we're talking about <laughs> ride or dies and, and I'm like distracting us. I'm distracting us. Go ahead. Okay. Anyways, uh, like that's, that's a really cool thing. I mean, oftentimes women like can be very distracting and uh, try to pull you away from your dreams and what you're trying to do, especially when you got rugrats, dude. So mm-hmm. like, it's very, very cool that you know relationships like yours exist gives people like us hope (laughs) yeah i mean to be honest a little bit because like you know like 
you meet you meet people and and uh relationships crumble and then it's like you feel like you're just kind of all alone in something and then you know to know that there are ladies out there that are that well, ride or die yeah well good. that's the thing with mma i mean it's such a I mean, it is a team sport, but at the end of the day, you got to go home by yourself for a lot of the nights and, and, you know, feel a lot of the pain by yourself, I'm sure. sure. And having that extra support system, at even if it's a win, loss, I mean, I'm sure it's got to be so huge. Yeah, man. Trust me. I mean, she gets to hear the crybaby side of Ramon, that's for sure. Everybody's always like, dude, you're so tough. You'll never hear I'm like, yeah, right. Do I go home? That's my wife. I'm tough. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Cry about everything. Uh, okay, walk. But you ask me at the gym, yeah, let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> We're all about it all the time. But, dude, but yeah, definitely. That's awesome. How uh when you were when you were those thicker, thicker weights, were you fighting it at heavier weights or was it like were you still trying to cut or was it just that in between time? Um, it was definitely in between time. My okay. uh, our coach was like, Hey, you're gonna be at thirty five pounds. I was like, ah, well, that'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's what like, where are you at at that yeah, point, dude? I was probably, I was above two hundred, and he's just like, oh, dude, shit. quit fucking eating chalupas. Look at you, look disgusting. Like I came back, like I said, I was gone for two. He's like, do you eat Ramon? <laughs> I was like, it's like, oh, dude, I'm buff now. I've been lifting, you know. I wasn't buff. I was fat, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, that, dude. yeah, dude, it was crazy. You know, it's funny too because it was like ten years ago, and like. Obviously, Facebook memories are a thing. And I was like, wow, as they come back, it's like, that was me. And everybody's like, dude, we don't remember you ever looking like that. I was like, yeah, I probably never went anywhere. How embarrassing. You know, yeah. that's what happened. I just hit at home. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it was I was still competing. As a matter of fact, one of the only fighters in Arizona that's actually competed in five different weight classes. So yeah. I still did it. It's not like I was like, fuck it, dude. I was like, again, same way dumb we'll fight fucking anybody i don't care dude, dude, so, what was the tallest guy that you fought uh, you, that? uh it's he's probably like six three as a matter of fact yeah, i was a kid i fought in new mexico i fought that dude i fought that dude at 175 right i was an amateur and i was i was far and i was an amateur i was like yeah dude it's all a matter of time i'm the fucking best fighter in the world right <laughs> i got new mexico and i'm supposed to fight a dude but again, I'm an amateur. <laughs> and I uh, supposed to fight a guy named Sammy Garcia, and I get there, and this is at 155. I make weight at 155, and they're like, your opponent didn't show up, man, but we have another opponent here, and if you fight him, we'll pay you $500. Like, Fuck, I've never been paid to fight nobody. <laughs> dude. Like, yeah, sign me up. Let's go. And, yeah, they fucking, we went. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, first round, like, the dude just had zero wrestling. You fucking sucked at wrestling. I took the dude down, and humped his leg because i couldn't fucking punch him he's so fucking strong i couldn't hold the motherfucker down and i was like this is terrible like what's going on and i was like, i'm gonna try to strike with this fucking pussy next round <laughs> and i remember my my coach was like nah just take him down again i was like fuck that i didn't even really know how to strike yet either dude i still thought i was a self uh fucking sitting there and then the dude came out then like faint to the right hand i remember slipping through a switch kick and knocked me dead dude i was just like oh. <laughs> like dude I, like he fucking knocked me in a time machine dude like i was like literally hours later still asking when i'm gonna fight just like well, fight. like what happened there? like dude literally just like boom clicked me oh. it was like the fucking worst because like i remember my brother-in-law would be like dude my brother's a badass fighter my brother-in-law's a badass and everybody you two my name like dude don't show him that fucking second round <laughs> you watch off. the first round yeah that's pretty dope they go just watch 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 Man, dude, they busted my balls about that over oh, and over. And that was no everything. It wasn't. And again, people only remember your last fucking fight, that dude. You know, it, dude. I walked to. It's not like, hey, why are you fighting this big old fucking monster? It's yeah, like, right. dude, knock you the fuck out, Debo style. You know, yeah. I was like, well, of course he fucking knocked me the fuck out. Look at him. It's like big weight classes, you know? Oh, dude, that was fucking wild, you know? But again, that's that's me i don't that's care dude fighter, it's not dude. ufc one bro dude, for real <laughs> and it's funny because i mean i just had this conversation with our coach alan a while our boxing coach alan virus he's just, it's funny like these dudes are all getting ready for camp and whether 55 pounders 45 pounders 35 pounders or 25 pounders they give me rounds i do you're the fucking utility man you're just that guy that could give a good look at all times when you're going with someone smaller you're not an asshole when you're going with someone bigger you can match them power for power you're that guy on this team 
goes, sucks to be you. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, fuck, man. That like, does suck, it does, because they use me for everything, and I was like, fuck, you it's crazy. You some big boys dude, coming through now, For real, too, I'm dude. not kidding, yeah. dude. I'm like, it's not fun getting hit by Henry Corrales. It's not fun getting hit by these dudes, but... Yeah, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Roll them up. Let's go. Because yeah. <laughs> they know. Some people are scared of this shit. Like, fuck no, you ain't paying me to spar. You want to do it? I'm like, Ramon, we give them around. I'll give them two, motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs> you know, so, and that's anything, dude. Honestly, I mean, for the longest time, like, dude, Anthony didn't have any big body. That's Anthony Rosemo. who's been on one of your guys' shows. Yeah. I was like, I'll spar fucking Anthony. Yeah, he's like, I mean, dude, he's trying. I go, don't pull shit, dude. You try to fuck me up. Let's see. You know, he's just like, like, dude, this guy's fucking wild. Like, what's wrong with them? Like, dude. You're not that bad, dude. Here we go. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I hope you don't fucking hit me with anything. <laughs> but, but I play the part good, dude. I sit there yeah. I'm like, dude, no problems. Dude, nobody but. would doubt it. What's funny about <laughs> Anthony is my first day, and I'm actually taller than Anthony. He asked me to spar, and I said, no way in fucking hell. So that's the difference. <laughs> that's the difference. Dude, that's <laughs> it, right? That's why we're here. That's You're why there. we do this. And you do dude, that. that's it, man. And that's, it's so funny. I look at him, he goes, I fucking hate sparring you. I go, why? Because you're fucking little and you fuck me up and I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, right? I mean, Anthony's hit me with some big shit before. I'm like, oh, that was fucking awful. Worse. That hurt? Mm -mm. <laughs> you know? nope. nope. You're a bitch, dude. <laughs> but in the back of my head, like, fuck, you almost knocked me out two times in that round. I'm not going to tell him, though. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it's like one of those, right? And again, you know, it's like anybody, you know, when Henry needs rounds, like, fuck, I'm your Huckleberry, Frankie. Anybody around just doesn't matter. Honestly, dude, Korean Zombie showed up. I was like, oh, nice to meet you, Korean. He's on me. Oh, you spar? <laughs> yeah, I was like, cool, dude. This guy's fucking Konnichiwa, guys. We said nice to me. Dude fucking sounded like thunderbolts or boom. I was like, oh, he don't like me, huh? I was like, all right, cool. And it was the wildest experience, man. Every time I hit him hard, he laughed and I thought I heard, whoa. And I look and I was like, oh, no, good, 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 good punch. And I was like, dude, why are you screaming like that? Quit scaring me. You know, it's like crazy, man. So I was like, I'm like so excited yeah, for him to come so back. It was wild. And I just like look at Santino and Frank and why the fuck's he doing that? In my wife's like, why does he yell like that? Dude, I was like, dude, I don't know. I thought I tore his ACL like five different times, dude. I like punched him and hit a big dog. Whoa! I was like, dude, it's like an anime fucking show. Dude, I was like, this is so crazy. Why zombie this way, you know? But he was just like the most awesome, respectable dude. I'm so excited to watch that Ortego fight, dude. I'm just so happy That's to be part insane. of his camp too, right? So it's going to be cool. Dude, that whole, I'll tell you what, Ortega has made it tough, you know, these last two fights for me to be like, I, I was such, I became such an Ortega fan, like on his come up. Yeah. And then like he had to fight uh holloway. holloway fight and like that's a tough fan to be a fight in yeah, everyone because likes holloway everyone loves holloway yeah, absolutely and then and now zombie is team fight ready so like, fucking hey how can you not right i can't yeah it's just coolest. it's tough <laughs> yeah well and uh speaking of fight ready it's crazy because it seems like now it's like it's almost coming like a a southwest mecca if you will for just like all the top guys to come through it, it really year. is, man. It's pretty cool, right? We didn't even know your year was coming until Monday. Oh, really? And we're just like, you just he, while, he, while Henry fucking sends everybody, I got trying to fire at him. And I, like, <laughs> sometimes the motherfucker gets me in trouble with some of the girls he sends to fire. Oh, go ask for a mom. I'm like, no, don't fucking ask for me, dude. Go ask for somebody else. I was like, my wife works at the, the front boys, desk dude. now. I was like, go ask for anybody but me. After you get there, don't act like you know me. I was like, I'll teach you some shit, but don't say my name. <laughs> Here we go. But nah, on the real though it's fucking cool man like yeah you showed up it's so funny man i was just like in ireland i was uh, obviously up there and uh miles jerry was fighting and i was just, like jeremy stevens was cornering him i was like this motherfucker just eye patch let's see what we got going on right now <laughs> just a shitty human dude he is like i mean really? the way he acts like everybody's so fucking cool i mean you run into dudes i mean dude we're all pretty much the same right we're mm -hmm. all we all respect each other for yeah. what we do this guy is wild, man. I was just like, dude, I literally, I was like, dude, whenever I, like, he left this taste on, I was like, dude, I hope you're fucks this dude up dude i was like before i was kind of the eye poke here was kind of an asshole after the fight i was kind of like fuck dude i was kind of bullshit yeah you did that like i didn't know you know and then mm -hmm. after like meeting stevens and trying to talk to him and trying to fucking big dog me like he's fucking something special i was just like come on dude get out of here with that you know and uh it's so funny then fucking i am sitting here licking my wounds about my fight and then fucking all is forgotten yeah your walks in right and he's just like I heard that you need to be my training partner for this week. I'm like, well, fuck, dude. I was kind of licking my wounds out of bad cut. I'm hurt. 
But yeah, let's fucking do it. <laughs> you know? so, so I've been a fucking partner all fucking week, two times a day, you know, like, God, it's so, it, dude, it's so crazy, dude. right? Like, he comes in and goes, let's what spar a little life. bit. He has his, like, fucking four-ounce UFC gloves. I have 16s on. I'm, like, fucking sparring with this fucking tornado of a man. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, this is fucking crazy. I go, this is this is my life, dude. This is what we do. Yeah. So it's pretty nuts, and it but really like, is. He's not, one of the best strikers right now, too, in the division, dude, for sure. he's wild. He is, but not everybody's, like, willing to do that stuff, though. You know, like, it takes it takes a for special sure. type of Oh, you don't understand. I mean, fighter. people said, fuck no, whenever he yeah, came in. Like, like, he comes in, and I have no idea. He just shows up. He's like, spar? <sighs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so I was like one of those and like again dude I just had one of the worst cuts of my life I don't bitch him I'm like dude my fucking kidney he's like this fucking guy he's in camp he's two weeks away from his fight and you're going as <laughs> fucking hard as he can <laughs> this is crazy but I'll be that guy I'm like dude. shit dude and that's just it man I've just always been that way I'm like fuck dude it's is what it is man I've, just, I've always been that teammate somebody could always rely on me and I just I just hope hope that it makes an impression on people whenever i need people they do the same for me it's yeah i mean that's that's always the hope with with any anything really like and do you find that it's it's you get that back most uh, of the time you know mm, yes and no i mean there's a lot of times this sport's pretty selfish but i'm a selfless human dude i really am and that's Something I know, like even talking with Coach Eddie and Todd, he's like, dude, you got to be more selfish. You got to fucking your times. You got to take your time back. You got to do things like, but it's just not my nature, man. It just isn't. Like to me, I've always been a team player. I've always been one of those guys. Like you got dudes even like on the team that kind of like will hate and don't like, I mean, kind of like, dude, we never made it. Like secretly don't want people to be successful. And that's never me, dude. Right. If you've crossed my journey and you're now part of my journey, dude, I'm like, I wish you the best and I want you to fucking excel and be the greatest. Dude. I really do. Like to me, I'm just, I'm, I'm all about it, dude. I just want to see people be the best version of themselves they could be because it just gives me hope, dude. We could all be there. We all put our fucking pants on one leg at a time. And, right. and I just know it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Well, again, that's another thing that shows too, just because uh, I think the first time I met you was before you were in the UFC. So you're the way you are or were then is the exact same through like everything. We kind of touched on that earlier, but like it's just crazy to see how real that that is because so many guys can get kind of caught up in the moment. People just it, talk about it too, and then like they don't be about it, right? Yeah, or or they just get too. Uh, a lot of people get too big for themselves. Dude. Exactly, yeah. that's what happens. A lot yeah. of people do. Like, I mean, what if that happened for Stevens a little bit? It could have. I mean, from that Connor thing, yeah. that press conference, like that one press conference, I think completely changed the way he Stevens was. Right, his whole persona. Yeah, the, who the fuck is that guy? Right, yeah. who the fuck is that guy? But um, literally though, like, and he he's always had a humongous chip on his shoulders, and he's like. I love the way he fights. So he's a fucking animal, you know. He's just like, dude, you're gonna get a fight out of that guy all the time. But person, <laughs> not the coolest, you know. That's for sure. Um, but it is what it is, man. I mean, again, like, uh, I mean, hopefully he prepares well. Hopefully things go well. I hope yeah, your fucks him up <laughs> and maybe I'll humble him a little bit, man. We'll yeah, see. <laughs> yeah. Well, karma usually has a good uh, way of coming around. Well, it's a very ruthless sport, too. Yeah. So very cutthroat, rather. Hopefully he gets it done. Yeah, dude, I'm excited for here. Like I said, man. I mean, when is that again? Two weeks? Yep, on the 18th, man. Going to Boston, they actually are leaving on Wednesday. They want to go acclimate over there. But um, yeah, I, I was very surprised. I like by how good that dude's anti wrestling is. It really mm. is. Like I like just moving with him and doing things. Like whenever I hit takedowns, he immediately, immediately attacks the submissions. You feel like you're in danger the whole time. I was like. Oh, this guy's a lot better than I thought. And he was a great striker, but he's so well rounded. I was like, dude, this kid is really? this kid is good. Like Damn. this kid is good. So I'm I'm excited to see where he ends up. Yeah, I'm super excited. Where's where's his like main uh does he have a main camp right now? Yeah, his main camp is at Jackson's right now. Yeah. Um he's obviously actually part of the, the cowboy team more than anything, so he does most of his training at the BMF ranch. Mm. But um uh, yeah, he's just it's like, dude, I just feel like I don't get the wrestling I need here. And, like, I came here to work with Angel Cejudo, who I'm not kidding, dude. He's just, like, light years above any coach I've ever worked with as far as wrestling goes. 
it's crazy, man. Like everybody in the room could come and he's teaching something. You just like stare at this guy like, fuck, dude. Like, how do we not know this? Like, I mean, it's just one of those things. And I feel the same with like Eddie Cha now. Like I'm like, dude, I just felt like I was a real, I considered myself a great striker. And then I see, I'm like, dude, how the fuck did I fight for 12 years and not know this? Like, what the hell? Mm. You know, but I can't be salty about it. It's just like, what am I going to do with this knowledge now, right? It's yeah, just one of those things. Forward. You just start applying yeah, it as I, you go. Yeah, I hear a lot of dudes that are just like, even on our team, they're like, fuck, dude, if I only knew this, I go, dude, you, fuck, you can't change the past, but what are you going to do with this shit now that you have it in your hands? Dude, let's go fucking take over the world. Yeah, you're like, so, yeah, you're telling me. Yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, one of those things, man. Like, like you just you gotta get get to that move forward point, and like can't dwell on the shit that you could have done better the last nah, time. Not at all, man. I Otherwise, mean, you're just gonna sit there and reflect on your your last performance, and you're only as good as your last one. That's the biggest yeah. thing, man. It really is. I mean, you have people like. Cowboy who says he allows himself one day to be a crybaby. And then I talked to MVP whenever we were over there before he gave his interview. And he's like, dude, I literally was sad for like two hours. It doesn't matter. We get caught. He goes, you know how many fucking people I've knocked out before they're ready to get knocked out? He goes, dude, it was bound to happen to me. And we know. It's the, dude, whenever we fight, oftentimes you guys are so evenly matched. Like with whoever you're fighting, it's not who's better. It's just who fucks up first. Yep. And sometimes that's you. And sometimes it's them. Yep. And I mean, it's just the way this sport is so cruel, dude. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the highest highs, the lowest lows, it gives, it takes. And it's one of those things, dude. Everybody, you know, eventually meets that somebody that they just can't beat or something happens that night. Like nobody knows what's going on in the fighter's mentality until I mean, until they allow the world to know. And a lot of times people keep that to themselves, you know. So, I mean, right. everybody, I mean, just like you have bad days of practice. Some days you wake up on fight day and you're like, oh, fuck, dude, it's going to be a fucking bad day. And you just know it, but what can you do about it? You know, you're already signed up. You got to fight. You just wait in. So Yeah, Cowboy is one of the most vocal guys about that. Like when he feels like shit on fight day, right. he'll, like he's he's the first guy to tell you in like Nerves. in the octagon yeah. even. Like he'll say he was real nervous or or stuff like that. But yeah. um, not, oh, go ahead. Not to change the subject at all. But were you able to watch Michael Venom Page's fight at all? Yep. Sure was, man. They had a big uh, screen TV in my locker room while I was back there. So, I mean, I didn't pay attention to a lot of the fights. I obviously watch the Ben and Miles fight because I know Ben pretty well. Mm. And then I uh, watched MVP fight just because I was supposed to go on immediately after. But then they put a filler fight in the two girls that fought before me. I don't even know who the fuck mm, they were. but. Either, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I watched there, and I was like, I'm curious how she's going to bounce back just because I seen the opponent, and dude was fucking one and one and he comes out. I was like, yeah, this guy is just not experienced enough to fight a monster like this. But he talks so much shit, weigh-ins, everything. I was like, all right, this guy's going to get himself knocked. Just how's it going to happen, you know? So it's pretty wild, man, just seeing this dude do what he does. And I was like, man, that just shows you there's leagues, and this is what happens. This dude was just not ready for something like this. And it showed. Yeah, yeah well, I was going to ask because they uh, they kept deducting a point because of uh, – or they deducted a point off for of, the uh, – For the selfie, dude. I yeah, guess, for the uh, selfie. What, yeah. what do you – Well, Dan, I mean, fuck, dude, you should be able to do whatever you want. It's yeah, your time I, when you're in that cage. Fuck Dan Mergliata for that. Yeah. But I will say pro Dan Mergliata because he wiped spit off of me whenever I walked out and got spit on. So, I mean, there's that, oh, you know. Yeah. So Spit on I mean, dude, fuck it. Yeah. He's all apologizing to these guys. Like, I expected it, dude. You walk out and even, you know, like, I had Master McGowan with me from Chandler MMA. And he's just like, dude, these guys are fucking animals. He goes, it's past midnight here. They've been drinking since like 2 o'clock probably. He goes, some bad shit's about to happen, you know. So he got me mentally prepared for that. And, mm. I mean, it wasn't just uh, you fucking spick and the That was why I was like, all right, cool. These guys fucking hate me. All right, this is awesome. And I was like, fuck, I know I didn't just fucking feel a loogie hit my shoulder, you know. And I was sitting there. And, you know, like, and yeah, I looked back. And Dan Merkley, I was like, dude, I'm so fucking sorry. These fucking savages. You know, he's like wiping me off with a towel before I get into the cage. But. It's all part of this fucking sport, man. You know, it's another memory. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I got, <laughs> I got MMA fans, fans, That's man. it, right? I'm what like, we got to do to chill MMA that's fans That's what I'm out. saying, dude. Hopefully the show helps, but. Yeah, it was wild, shit. man. Literally, I was like, oh, well, there's a new one. I just got fucking spit on. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know like, what, dude? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you this. In, in hockey, like, in the NHL, they have um, the ice girls. Actually, a lot of levels of hockey. They got ice girls, and they go out there with shovels and go around the ice and sometimes, like the the other team, they they'll just be spitting, 
and sometimes they'll spit on these chicks on accent, sometimes on purpose. Sometimes, yeah. But I've heard some stories of some girls that have gotten spit on and <laughs> were not happy. It's pretty wild, right? Like yeah. I like I mean, I've heard of crowds that are pretty nuts. In this context, they weren't happy. So you don't make that. No, I know. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like, oh, what's up? I mean, yeah. Like, but if like an accidental spit, it'd be like, oh shit, I just got spit on. That's you know, oh. yeah. No, like these girls got purposely someone, spit on because it's opposite team. You know, it's gross. Oh, she. Oh, they got purposely spit on. Yeah, like oh, sometimes oh, it was accident, oh, but a lot of times oh, it was, per, it was oh, uh, per, purpose. purpose. Well, yeah, then anytime it's a- purposely, then yeah, it's fucked up. But I <sighs> thought it was just all accidental. My yeah. bad. Sorry, Roman. Hey, but getting spit on is not cool. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, not. No, it's, it's either not cool. It's not cool. I was like, oh man, this is pretty wild. Yeah. That's what Jesus felt like. <laughs> I was yeah, like, this is dude. it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. And then to keep your composure, right, you walk into the cage like, fuck, dude, it's another fucking thing. It's fucking crazy. Then I got to fucking deal with the longest walkout in the fucking history of Earth, dude's fucking singing. And I was like, mm. I was like, you get in the fucking cage. Yeah, <laughs> like, dude, God damn it, dude. Long dude, it was so out. long. It was just so long. I was like, this guy's fucking wild. What's he doing? Like, God damn it. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Yeah. It was it was so obnoxious too oh because God, it's like the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's you get to that point where you're you're holding up what people are there to see. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, you're not there to see a walkout. Yeah, no, I'm like literally sitting here. And I'm like, all right, get in the cage. Like whatever's going to happen, let's fucking do it. And he's trying to fucking peacock me, intimidate <laughs> me. I just fucking let this motherfucker do. I'm like stone cold just looking through him and he walks out trying to just fucking walk up to him the ref has to push me back i'm like dude i don't give a fuck about anything you think you're about to do or shit I, like i just didn't do honestly oh fuck dude if there's ever a fight in my whole career i could have back could be that one you know i mean he was trying to be super respectful and cool but i did talk so much shit all week i'm like fuck that dude that ain't real homie i'm like how are you yeah. gonna be like that I go, I'm a martial artist, dude. It's all about respect. I've never had bad things to say about my opponents. I'm always super respectful, win or lose, but that little motherfucker has one coming to him. I'll tell you, I I mean, if it's not me, I mean, how do you not get humbled after fucking getting sweet chin music to your fucking face and knocked out? You get worse, you know? I'm like, God, dude, so nothing's going to humble this guy. I mean, he's just going to be this way. And I don't know if it's youth or what it is. I'm trying to think back in my mind. I was like, when I was 22, I was like, no, I was fucking fat when I was 22. So, <laughs> so I definitely wasn't cocky like this guy, you know. But, <laughs> but it's just, it's just crazy to see, man. It really is. I'm like, we got another fight, fuck. dude. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, man. Sign my goal up. is just to work. My, that'd be the one fight I want to cut back down to 35 for. Just to, if, that, like, literally, if I could fucking make a run, be like, give me that motherfucker. Full Please, camp. just give me a camp. I don't even need a full camp. Give me a month. Yeah. And then I fucking have my way with that dude. You're going to have to get him out. See, you're going to have to do more than that. Sorry. Sorry, Z. We're, yeah. King Awkward Show. We're good, though. <laughs> Anyways. We're fine. That yeah, sign, it's, uh, we're going to have to do that sign in Spanish, I think, because they're not. No comprendo. That's what's up. No comprendo. But it's okay. I can write. I think she spoke English. Yeah, yeah. It's, I know. I, was, uh, We're I, was, uh, to... I could write it up for you guys if you yeah. guys want. Believe All right. it or not. All right. we'll Believe it or not. <laughs> Get a little paragraph. I'll help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just got to end with te quiero. Yep, te quiero. Yep. Mucho. Yes. <laughs> Dang, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Bell, not take care. Ooh, we Is there a difference between take care and yoga? Okay? Humongous difference. One means I love you, the other one means I want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but no, just keep saying whatever you want. I mean, I want and love kind of goes. Once yeah, it's kind of the same. I want love. Uh, yeah, dude, that is. That's all anybody <laughs> yeah. wants. It's all we want. Damn, dude. Uh, well, where were we? I don't know. I, I we were wanting want to get that fight back for sure. But um, what else, dude? Do you have anything else that you want to like talk about or? Uh, not really, man. I mean, I mean, I mean. Everything, honestly, dude, like I, I mean, said. We've got into a, a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, for sure. The power of positivity, right, dude? It's like, mm. all it is, it really is, dude. Like, a, a lot of times people, it's funny, man, like, having some of these, again, to come back to, like, conversations with, like, when do you think you're going to hang them up? What's going to happen? Like, I've never really had a feeling or want or desire to do so. So I will say it's, like, going to be pretty cool. I've, luckily, I'll knock on some wood after I say this dumb shit, but I've gone... A long career without any real injuries i've had a lot of cuts i take care of my body i'm always you know like we said i'm always in shape i'm always doing all the right things so hopefully you know i could go at this another you know four or five years and just have my run in bell tour and see what we could do dude i think that'd be really cool 
That would be really cool, man. I think you can for sure. You're at you're at that perfect age, and you got a great team around you too with uh, Neuroforce One, right? With all of like their recovery oh, stuff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and whoever Most, else you've got working with well, you, just fight ready right now too. Yeah, like you were yeah saying, fight ready all overall. Is, with guys. God, it really is, man. Just a revolving door. It seems yeah, like. NF1's cool too, man. As a matter of fact, like after my last fight, they're like, "You'll never make 35 again," right? And it's just like, here's the thing: like, I my walk around weight's now 168. Mm. you know and they're like dude what are you doing and then you're like not only are you at 168 but you're at 168 and eight percent body fat so mm. anytime i cut down uh 135 pounds i essentially cut 26 pounds of muscle off my body and they're like oh wow they're like why do you even fucking cut weight like what are you doing <laughs> i was like well i don't fucking want to call my coach santino and tell him <laughs> <laughs> i was like you know because i truly believe that Every fighter, everybody has a certain amount of weight cuts they could do. Like, your body has a memory just like muscles do. And whenever you put it through trauma like that, it does whatever it can to not allow that trauma to happen again. You know, we just keep right. doing it over and over. And, yeah, dude, I find it more difficult, more difficult every time. It's like, shit, dude, this is crazy. Like, my body just doesn't want to do it. And I'm just, like you said, the perfect age. I'm, I'm fucking a mature man now. I'm 31 now, you know. So, I mean... Some get easier, and I mean it's not like I'm doing anything different food wise or eating bad or anything. It's just my body wants to grow, and that is I don't think grown men are supposed to weigh 135 pounds. You know, like they're just not. <laughs> so, right. Unless they're like, sh like way shorter. Yeah, probably. That's it. I mean it's just tough. Yeah. The other thing is too is you're already super fast. You're already super strong. You're not short. I mean, even yeah, five right. like five seven's not short at all. No, not at all. I mean. I just like to me, I always go back to like a Frankie Edgar, right? The dude right. ruled like the lightweight division, you know, one up forever. And just because of that, you could wear a punch so much better. You can move like, you know, you're going to have tough first rounds all the time because you got to deal with all that strength and power. But get out of that first round, dude, and these dudes start getting tired. They start looking slow. Like, dude, featherweights to me are fucking slow for the most part. Like, I really, mm -hmm. I like, and again, I, I'm fast. I, I know I am. Like, I'm just one of those dudes that has fast hands. And for some reason, God bless me with power, too. So it's just like, I've been hearing that. Like, dude, you fucking hit hard, like, too. I'm like, I think I always have. It's just one of those things. I remember early in my career, dude, I just used to, like, touch people. And I didn't think it was that hard. And then I watched them go down. I was like, fuck it. All right, cool. <laughs> we won. You know, but it's one of those things that I, I think I could really use to my ability now. And that's just combining all that power and speed advantage I would have against a 45 pounder. So I'm really excited to see what we're going to do with that. Do you feel less power at 135 usually? 100%, man. I mean, the power comes from your hips and your legs. Whenever mm -hmm. I cut to 35, do those last 10 pounds all, I mean, do I walk into a fight for the first time when, with no, with no uh, glute muscles on me anymore and my ass goes away and that's, it goes all that power with it, man. Damn. All that. Yeah. People got to stop cutting weight so crazily, man. We're uh we're about to lose our camera here, so oh. um do we have we got anything else or are we good? No, we that's it. We'll just give him a quick shout out. Yeah, where can we follow you? Yeah, where can we follow you? Oh, cool, man. Uh, Roman Salazar MMA on both uh Instagram and Twitter, and Roman Salazar on Facebook. If that's still a thing, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still I, I think it's. Still I think thing. he's on MySpace too. If you look yeah, hard enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool, man. Stay we're tuned gonna, for his next fight in Bellator. We're yep. excited to see it. Yep. Absolutely, man. I'll definitely keep you guys posted and hopefully give you guys a little gym tour at some point, too. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> yes, stay next. tuned for the next part. Later. All right. Later. All right. We're back. What up? A uh, little bit of a different vibe than normal. Since we got Roman with us, GM, we got exclusive access to do a tour of the gym. So we're we're in the life of fight ready, really. Yeah, and then we're going to get to watch some of the pro team, and they're going to get in some sparring, right? Absolutely, man. You're going to kind of see what it's like whenever it's not popping here. I know a lot of the podcast has been here in the evening during our normal clientele hours, but now you're going to see what everybody doesn't get to see, the pro team kind of doing it, and where Fight Ready gets its name and reputation around the MMA world, for sure. Oh, yeah. Sweet. What's up, guys? I'm going to take you through the uh, scene here at Fire Ready whenever it's not normal operating business hours. Kind of what it looks like, the ins and outs, whenever the pro team starts getting here. What we do on a day-to-day -day basis, just kind of show you what the gym looks like whenever uh, there's not a bunch of classes running and a bunch of people that are just trying to get in shape. You know, these 
the people that are showing up here right now are all people that uh, have goals in mind and got fights coming up or just part of the pro team in general. So let's uh, give you a look. All right, man. So obviously you guys have been here many times before. We come in here, it's a little bit more empty during the day. Um, we're looking at about 11.26 right now. I would say the rest of the pro team is probably going to show up about 11.45. Get ready to warm up and get things going. Uh, Anthony has been on the show before. Jerry Ross, Jerry Stafford, all on the Um, In about T minus 45 minutes, you're going to see this cage. Feel the people beating the hell out of each other. Probably a little bit of blood here and there. Wednesdays, whenever it all happens, do we fuck each other up a little bit, but we all deal with the smile on our face. Yeah. I right now I'll be here. Stop. Coach Alan Byers, the boxing coach of the pro team here. John Rod, a familiar face. Coach Eddie Shaw, head striking coach here, fight Eddie MMA. Got John Long working one year. Uh, you guys is a uh, previous guest on the show. <laughs> and here we got dudes just kind of coming in a little bit early, getting some bad work. Some of them probably going to start noon class. Like I said, we got all our pro teams probably getting ready to kick off. Ooh, we got Anton Boo here. Anton Boo be the five, be on the move. Coach Eddie Trot teaching him everything he knows. He's ready to go. Coming here, you guys would have come in here about an hour ago. Chad EK, our strength and conditioning coach, had three different NFL guys. Um, pretty awesome, man. So, I mean, this is what the gym looks like. Once this uh, sparring takes off, you guys can record a little bit of this warm up. I'll go ahead and throw my super suit on.
it's gonna be awkward. <laughs> <laughs>